something like you know one percent of all PhDs in astronomy are from minority backgrounds. Thinking about how we do our own selection methods and really challenge our ability to say, well, you know, you're not really selecting people like you. You're really trying to select at the best. And what does the best mean? Our goal is to get the best people into this department. And if the best people all look the same, we probably haven't cast a wide enough net. We certainly are a top 10 department in the world and probably top five in, in, in the nation. I'm a very talented black woman who studies astronomy. I'm Mexican. My dad is black um, and super mixed as most black people in America are. And then my mom is from the Czech Republic. I don't know, that's something that I'm like working through of figuring out how to identify myself, but I'm Chinese and I'm an American citizen. Right now I work on two seemingly similar, but kind of disparate things. So the first is how clouds form on these really massive, really hot planets outside of our solar system called hot Jupiters. My research is on understanding the atmospheres of planets around other stars, so trying to figure out what they're made of. I came to this country already with a certain confidence established. You know, I felt like I could do anything. That's what my parents taught me. And as soon as I came to this country, I started getting these huge background noise of saying like, oh, are you from Mexico? Do they have schools in Mexico? Uh, can you do physics if you're Mexican? And all of these, uh, you know, sea of sort of, you know, kind of microaggressions started growing in me. And, you know, even people will tell me like, oh, don't tell people that you're from Mexico. You don't really look that Mexican. So maybe you should be from Brazil or Argentina because that's so much more exotic and people are going to believe that you're more intelligent. No? So I started receiving all these messages. And at some point I said, well, maybe I shouldn't tell people that I'm Mexican. And at that point I had the realization is like, this is crazy, you know. I don't look Mexican. So when I... When I talk and I say like, oh, I come from Mexico, people don't, don't believe me. Or when I'm talking in Spanish, people just assume that, that I talk in English, so they start to speak to me in English. I remember one instance in undergrad when I was doing this astronomy lab class and I had to turn in this report. It's the first report of the semester and I got, I got the feedback back and one of the comments was, you write really well, so one comment that I get is that my English is really good. And it's sort of like without them knowing my background first, they just think that that's a compliment to pay me. And my second year, I asked the counselor, hey, you know, I want to go to grad school. But I don't have the grades. Um, how do I change this? And like her first response was like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, grad schools need like minority students. It was an example presentation for something I might give to undergrads. Um, but I gave it to a class with a few professors in it of grad students, and they're supposed to give me feedback on my work. Most people gave me really good feedback. Like, that was a great explanation. And then one of the professors in the room said, oh, that was really good. I think it would be better if you did it as a rap. They don't say it, but some people, you can see it in their eyes. Like when I say, oh, I'm an astronomer, they're like, huh. I really, you really don't have role models that look or come from any background that you do. I didn't really realize the strength of role models. Uh, I mean, I think we all can relate to a role model that we have growing up. Um, but, you know, I noticed when doing the statistics for the classes, particularly the introductory classes, that when I was teaching that class, I was getting almost a factor of three times as many Hispanics in my class. The thing is that my advisor is also Mexican, and he was the one that opened the doors for me. It'd be awesome if I could have some kind of position of power where you can impact change, or even just, I'd like to see as many black women or women of color in positions of power because it changes things just by having you there. I think moving forward, I want to figure out how to best acknowledge other people's identity and learn about their stories to let them know that they're doing science, but who they are matters too. And they're people first before they're scientists. My dream is that the students that come from this program you know, are so successful and start basically feeling positions of leadership that at some point in the near future, we actually don't have to uh, change the system, but the system will be changed from within. And